Sa video ito, tuturuan ko kayo kung paano ninyo ilalagay sa Google Sheet or Excel file ang resulta ng inyong Likert Scale Questionnaire at kung paano ninyo i-interpret ito. Unang-una, pakitaan ko kayo ng sample questionnaire in a Likert Scale format para meron tayong concrete example. So, bale, etong questionnaire na to ay ginawa para sa study na to. So, yung title ng study is A Comparative Study of Senior High School Teachers' Experience Between Traditional Face-to-Face -face Learning and Online Learning. Yung questionnaire na ginawa ng researcher ay nasa two categories. So, ang isang set ng questions na ginawa nila ay para sa traditional face-to-face -face learning at yung pangalawang set ng questions na ginawa nila ay para sa online learning. Ngayon, ano naman yung mga na nila so that they can compare the experience of senior high school teachers on online learning and traditional face-to-face -face learning? So, unang-una, gusto nilang malaman kung may difference ba sa workload ng students ang online or traditional face-to-face -face learning. Kaya kung titingnan nyo, meron silang questions para sa workload of students. And look at this, may apat na options dito with corresponding points. Kasi definitely kapag gumawa ka ng Likert Scale Questionnaire, so aside from assigning options, mag assign ka din ng points. At ito yung points na inassign nila sa mga options. Pangalawang, gusto nilang tingnan, workload ng teachers. So, alin ba yung mas mabigat yung workload? Is it on the online learning or the traditional face-to-face -face learning? Accessibility of learning materials. Another is student performance. So, saan ba mas nagpa-perform yung mga estudyante? Mas mataas yung grade na nakukuha. Is it on the online learning or the traditional face-to-face -face learning? Another is feedbacking. Alin ba yung mas madali makareceive ng feedback yung estudyante? Or alin din ba mas madaling magbigay ng feedback yung mga teachers? Is it on the online learning or is it on the traditional face-to-face -face learning? Another is instruction of delivery. So, in terms of the ability of teachers to deliver the lesson, Alin ba mas madali? Alin ba mas effective? Is it on the online learning or is it on the traditional face-to-face -face learning? So we have six categories to look into. And this is for traditional. Sa online learning naman, ganun pa rin yung categories. Kasi nga magkukompare ka in terms of workload, alin ba ang mas okay sa dalawang modes of learning? And so on. So paano na nila ilalagay ito sa Excel or Google Sheet. So in my case, I'm going to use Google Sheet. So prepare ko na siya. In fact, ito yung advice ko sa mga nagre-research. Habang naghihintay kayo na ibalik sa inyo yung questionnaires ng inyong mga respondents, pwede na kayong gumawa ng ganito para kapag nakuha nyo na yung questionnaire, pa isa-isa, pwede nyo na siyang i-enter para hindi rin kayo natatambakan ng gawain. Tapos pwede ka na rin maglagay ng formula para pag-enter mo, instant, kinukompute na. So, unahin natin yung isang um, worksheet which is on the traditional mode of learning. So, if you can see here, prepare ko na siya. Nandito na yung different categories. So, yung workload of teachers, workload of students, accessibility of learning materials, and so on. Ngayon, um, based from the questionnaire, merong apat na questions dito. At meron ding apat na categories. Kaya kung titingnan nyo itong prepare ko sa Google Sheet, andito yung apat na questions. And instead na, you know, typing uh, the questions here, nilagay ko na lang question 1, 2, 3, and 4. Kasi guide mo lang naman to as a researcher. And then after that, you have to get the mean of each respondent and the interpretation per respondent. Tapos dito naman sa columns na to, ilagay mo na kung ilang respondent meron ka. So ngayon, since nasampo lang naman ito, um, let's just have five respondents. Okay, so nilagay ko na dito, respondent 1, respondent 2, 3, 4, and 5. And pwede mo din kunin yung mean score per question or per item dito. And as what you can see, naglagay na ako ng formula dito. Paano niyo kukunin yung mean score 
per respondent and per item. Ganito lang naman siya. So, alisin ko yung formula para maipakita ko sa inyo from scratch kung paano ko ginawa. Simply, um, click the equal sign and then type sum. Tapos, may mga lalabas na options. So, get this uh, option here, yung nakasulat na sum. Okay? And then, instant, may lalabas na open parenthesis. After that, highlight the row or column na gusto mong i-add. Okay. So, definitely, ang gusto kong i-add yung um, responses na respondent 1 for this particular category. And then, after that, close parenthesis. And you're not yet done. Kasi kapag ganito lang, total lang yung kinukuha mo. Eh, ang kailangan nga natin mean or average. So, to get the mean or average, lagay ka ng division sign or slash and divided by the number of questions or number of items na inad mo para makuha mo yung average. So, since I have four questions here, I have four items that I'm adding, so maglalagay ako ng divided by four. Okay? And enter. There you go. So, zero pa syempre kasi wala pa ako ini-enter dito. And just copy-paste this in all the other areas. At ganun yung ginawa ko. Same thing with this. The same um, principle. Okay. So, sige, para mas malinaw, evocate ko yung isa. Gawin natin to. Again, click the equal sign and then type sum. And then click the sum option. So, there will be open parenthesis. I'm going to highlight this one. Kasi eto naman, gusto kong malaman kung ano yung mean per question or per item sa lahat ng respondents. So, close parenthesis. And again, kailangan ko siyang i-divide kasi mean ang dapat kong kunin. So, I'm going to play slash or divide. And bibilangin ko ilang respondents ba ito meron ako. Meron akong limang respondents. So, divided by 5. And enter. Ngayon, enter na natin yung responses ng bawat respondent. So, let's assume na si respondent 1, Ang pinili niya in question number 1, sabihin nating strongly agree yung pinili niya. Ito yung chinek niya. Okay. So if that's the case, strongly agree is 4 points. So ang i-enter mo ngayon dito, 4. Okay? And then question number 2, sabihin nating ang pinili niya agree. So 3. And so on with the rest. So titingnan mo lang kung anong points yung nandun sa option na pinili niya. At yan yung i-enter nyo dito sa Google Sheet. Okay. So, kung titingnan nyo, eto, si Respondent 1, eto yung naging responses niya sa apat na questions and this is the mean of that particular respondent. So, paano natin interpret etong mga mean na to per respondent at per question or item? Yung goal ng study na to, ay gusto nilang malaman yung experience ng senior high school teachers under online learning mode and traditional face-to-face -face learning mode. So, sa pagbibigay ng interpretation, depende na yun sa researcher kung anong pipiliin mong klase ng interpretation as long as you are consistent about it. What do I mean about being consistent? Na take for example, since na this is about experience, so pwedeng Yung gusto mong words for interpretation would be very good experience, excellent experience, poor experience, di ba? Pwede ganon. Pwede namang high quality experience, quality experience, poor, very poor. So, pwede rin ganon. Basta consistent naman yung mga descriptors mo sa interpretation. So, ngayon, paano natin interpret ito? Bale, may computation para dito. Pero hindi ko na i-discuss yung computation kasi din-discuss ko na ito sa previous videos ko which is entitled How to Interpret Likert Scale Result. So, pakiting na na lang, pakipanood yung video na yon para malaman nyo yung proseso. Inredi ko na yung aking range for interpretation. So, eto yung mga words na pinili ko for interpretation. High quality, quality, poor, very poor. So, ngayon, tingnan natin yung mean ni respondent 1 under workload of teachers. 2.75 sa kanya. So, saan ba ito papatak sa range na ito? Oops. Ayan. So, 2.75 will fall here. 
greater than 2.5 to 3.25, which is talking about quality experience. So, ilagay natin dito, quality experience. And so on with the rest. There you go. Now, what about the mean score interpretation per item? So, 2.8, pasok siya dito sa quality. And then, for 3.2, pasok uli siya under quality. And the overall mean interpretation is 3. So, saan papasok yung 3 here? It's under quality. Now, kailangan nyo ito, itong overall mean score na to, pati interpretation, kaya i-highlight natin ng blue. Now, you will have to do the same on the rest of the categories. After filling up all the categories under traditional learning mode, punta ka na ngayon sa online learning mode. So, let's assume na na-fill up na din natin ito. Ngayon, anong gagawin na natin dito sa inyong row file? So, etong row file na to, ilalagay nyo ngayon yung mean score ng per category sa summary sheet. So, eto yan, inihanda ko na siya. Bale, etong row file na ginawa nyo, ilalagay nyo to sa appendices ng inyong research, tapos yung mag appear sa inyong actual paper or chapter 4 ay ito lang. Although, depende yon sa inyong advisor, research advisor, at research panelist. Pero in my case, sa aking research classes, ganito yung pinapagawa ko. Now, isa-isahin natin to. Punta tayo ngayon sa um, total population muna. Ano ba yung dapat na ilagay dito? Yung N or total population is talking about the number of respondents you have in your research. So dito sa atin, sa ating example, we only have five respondents. Kaya, lagyan natin to. Five, 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 five. Ayun. And for the traditional, tingnan na natin ngayon. Yung mean at interpretation. Okay. So, workload of teachers under traditional, we got three. And the interpretation is quality experience. Okay. So, lagay natin three. Quality experience. Okay. Now, under workload of students, 2.6 quality experience. 2.6 quality experience. And so on with the rest. Okay. And we're not yet done. So, kukunin mo naman ngayon yung overall mean ng bawat learning mode. And interpret the overall mean. Kasi etong mga data na to, tinignan lang natin yung experience ng mga teachers sa senior high school under each category. Na kung lumalabas na quality dito, may poor sa ibang categories or very poor, ngayon overall, kumusta ba talaga? yung kanilang experience under traditional learning mode and under online learning mode. Kaya yan yung purpose kung bakit kailangan natin kunin yung overall mean. So how do you get the overall mean? The same process like what we had a while ago. So equal sign. And then, eto, pwede nyo nang kunin yung average. Shortcut. So click average. Tapos, ayan, hinighlight na instant yung uh, mga rows na kukunin mo yung average. And then, enter. Okay, so we got 2.58. And here, the same. Equal, sign, and then click average, and then enter. Okay, now, ano yung interpretation nila? So, based from the range in the previous worksheet, so eto yon Pakita ko ulit. Ayan. So, kung dito sa online, 1.95, so, pasok siya dito. Greater than 1.75 to 2.5, which is poor. Ayan. And then, dito naman sa traditional, that's 2.58. So, ang 2.58, pasok siya dito. Greater than 2.5 to 3.25, which is quality. So, in this case, as you interpret your table when you write your findings and interpretation in your chapter 4, dito na lang kayo mag-focus sa table na to. So, sasabihin nyo na ngayon na kumusta ba yung um, 
experience ng mga senior high school teachers when it comes to workload of teachers under traditional and online learning mode. And so on. So isa-isayin mo muna yan, i-discuss. After that, have now your general interpretation in your discussion. So overall, kumusta ba talaga yung experience ng mga senior high school teachers under traditional learning mode? So it says here that they got a quality experience. So tamang-tama lang yung experience nila sa traditional learning mode. What about online learning mode? So here it says poor. Now, whatever your interpretation is, ito yung parating sinasabi ko sa aking mga research students, make sure that you back it up with a related literature. So what do I mean when uh, we speak about backing it up with related literature? Now, for example, sinabi mo na dito based from the overall interpretation na very poor yung experience ng mga senior high school teachers sa online learning mode. And sinabi mo na uh, you are interpreting this in a way na nahihirapan ang mga senior high school teachers sa online learning mode because of the um, poor accessibility of gadgets or internet accessible devices. Now, kapag sinabi mo yon without related literature that will back it up, that's invalid kasi parang opinion mo lang yun. So to make it valid, look for related studies claiming that what you are really saying is true. Now, uh, merong part 2 itong aking uh, video na to. Hindi pa tapos ito kasi magkukumpare ka. And when you compare, you will have to do t-test. So abangan ninyo ang aking susunod na video.